Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. You're watching DIY Dozier, and on today's episode, we are going to continue with the 6.0 LQ4 build for the Silver Auto Series. Stick around, see what we get into. So I'll take the opportunity to go ahead and clean up some parts. Uh, I've got the valve covers here, the front timing cover also, and the oil pan. Uh, this oil pan looks absolutely rough. I've hit it with like two cans of degreaser. Uh, I've hit it with, you know, I've scrubbed it with a brush, soap and water for, you know, car wash stuff. I mean, I just, I can't seem to get that thing clean. I may just buy a new oil pan because it looks like crap. So, you know, the, the valve covers, they're doing okay. I'm going to paint them. I'm going to paint that front timing cover also. It looks okay. I may go ahead and buy those as well because they're just not getting as clean as I want them to be. I'm not sure yet. So I've got this gasket on here, but I'm not going to put that oil pan on there. Probably not today now because now I've got, it's, it's been wet. I've got water in it. You know, it's, uh, it's drying out until it's completely dry. I don't feel comfortable putting it on the motor. So, all right guys, it is a new day and I'm back at it again. What I have done off camera that you didn't see was I went ahead and cleaned out the oil pan, uh, wiped it down really good. I scraped it with a razor blade on the flat surface here for the gasket. Uh, I got my gasket out of the box, it's ready to go. I have also scraped uh, this surface here for the oil pan to, to adapt to. I've scraped it, I've wiped it, uh, used flat edge razor for it. It's relatively clean. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this gasket put on here and get this oil pan put back on. All right, as you can see, I got the oil pan back on. I got a new uh, Fram oil filter on there. This is just for startup. I'm just gonna crank it whenever I do get it in the truck. I'll crank it for about five minutes, let it run, uh, get a lot of this uh, crap that's in there out of the motor, any debris or anything like that. So uh, I don't plan on doing any, you know, dyno runs or pulls or anything, but I did run into a bind. It says 18 foot-pounds of torque on the oil pan bolts to the uh, to the block and the oil pan bolts to the rear cover which is this guy right here uh, it says 109 inch pounds on the front cover I believe which is not on the motor yet so uh, I snapped the bolt um, yeah the bolt that goes in right here and it goes up through this channel and up into the rear cover here it snapped off inside that cover so yeah oops um it was 18 foot pounds i'm not sure why it never got tight never hit 18 foot pounds not sure what the deal is with that uh but i won't be able to address this until i get this motor off this stand the last thing i planned on doing with this motor was doing the rear the rear cover and the rear main seal so i'm just going to move on for right now i'm going to go ahead and get the uh the front cover front timing cover put on here on the front here uh, I'll make sure to get my uh, my RTV in the corners that it people typically say needs RTV right in there I'll get my RTV on the corners and uh, put my plate on there and then move on we will get to the rear main and addressing that issue I'll probably have to buy a new rear cover because I won't be able to tap that out so but good for me rear covers are cheap so moving on all right guys I figured out the boo-boo here uh, apparently when I did my my oil pan bolts, um, you got your pan to block, oil pan, you got oil pan bolts, pan to block, pan to front cover, pan to rear cover. I was seeing 18 foot pounds on the, the block, 18 foot pounds 
on the front cover and 106 pounds, inch pounds on the rear cover. So when I did the rear cover there, I thought it was 18 foot pounds. So yeah, I snapped the bolt off. Um, <laughs> live and learn. Uh, now I gotta buy a new rear cover. So, because I, I can't extract that bolt out of there. So anyway, um, note to self, <laughs> Pan to rear cover is 106 inch pounds torque, not 18 foot pounds, dummy. So here's our rear main seal in the back side of our front timing cover. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this thing knocked out of here so we can get the new one pressed in before I mount the single front of the motor. All right, I got my new front main seal pressed in there. Uh, the surface, the flat surface has been cleaned off with a razor blade and it's been wiped down with a terry towel and some carburetor cleaner or a brake, brake uh, cleaner. I have some, uh, some gray high temp gasket maker. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I have my, my gasket here. I'm gonna put a small film of this on some gloves. I'm gonna wipe it on the face of the motor there. I'm gonna wipe it on the face of the cover here as well. And I'm gonna put this gasket on right here bolt it all up and get it torqued down the spec. All right, my camera died on the tripod while I was in the middle of this process, so what you may have missed uh, would have been me. I tightened up all these bolts uh, just by hand. I just got it snug. I came back and I removed every single bolt one at a time. I added some, uh, some thread locker on them, and then I put them back in. And once I got them all snugged up, I came back with my torque wrench, and I snugged them all down and torqued them to 18 foot-pounds on the front cover here. So... Front cover is finally back on. Okay, so now that that's done, our next step is gonna be to get in here and put our lifters in their home here. Get all of our lifters and lifter trays put in and uh, let's get that knocked out. All right, so I've got my brand new Howard's lifters here, which go with my cam. Uh, I got my bowl of engine oil over there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and dump these uh, in the oil, let them soak for a minute, pick them up uh, one at a time and get those things installed inside this motor. All right, I got my new lifter trays installed with my lifters. Uh, torque specs call for nine foot pounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back in here and I'm just gonna snug them down by hand. Uh, my torque wrench doesn't go that low, so we'll be careful with these, make sure we don't strip them. All right, we got a lift of trays installed. I think next up is gonna be uh, putting some heads on. I'm gonna go ahead and get the surface of the heads cleaned off. I'm gonna wipe this surface off here with a terry towel and some carburetor cleaner. And we're gonna get these heads set back on the motor. All right, so these are Brian Tooley Racing uh, multi-layer steel head gaskets. That's what I got here. I'm gonna get these put on there and tighten down. Oh. 
And for anyone who's curious, I'm using Felpro uh, Torque to Yield bolts. These are not reusable, they're not ARP. I was trying to save a couple bucks. They have thread locker already on the tips there. Here's what I'm gonna be using to secure my heads. All right, I got the heads back on. Let me tell you, that made me a nervous wreck. Uh, this stupid gauge that I bought off the internet here did not work like it was supposed to. It worked initially, but if you look at it, it just free spins either direction. There's no tension on it. So whenever I turn the, uh, the torque wrench here to try to get my 90 degrees or my 70 degrees of torque angle, uh, this thing stopped turning. It's garbage. It worked on the first one and it doesn't work anymore so the first head is torqued with the gauge and the second one after i torqued the first couple bolts i went ahead and just said forget it i held the uh the torque wrench up at at 12 o'clock position and i went 90 degrees to the right which would put us at three o'clock and then of course when i came back for the uh second round i went 12 o'clock position and then i went to about 230 which would put us about 70 degrees so Unfortunately, I had to do it that way. It is what it is, but uh, but we're all torqued down. The heads are on. I am done for today. I, I've been out here for hours. I'm done with this for right now. Uh, I'll get back at it another day. So now that I have my heads on this motor, I'm going to go ahead and remove these factory valve springs and retainers out of here, and we're going to get our uh, our BTR uh, dual spring and titanium retainer upgrade installed into this. my new BTR valve spring uh, upgrade here. This is gonna be part number SK001, your uh, 660 dual platinum spring kit. You see all the numbers there, titanium retainers. And as you see here, it says, you know, use a stock style valve seals because it'll create coil bind we got to pull those out. All right, guys. So I am learning as I go, uh, which, you know, I don't know everything about these. It's my first time rebuilding one of these motors. So, again, uh, I'm just sharing my experiences with you. Apparently, this, uh, this seat is a two-piece seat. So you have the uh, 
these uh, these bottom pieces here that BTR provides, you got to stick in there. And when you remove the factory one, the factory one is a one-piece seat here. So this is new, actually, straight from the machine shop. Like, and these springs are new, retainers are new. By the way, if anybody wants these, uh, let me know, and I'll send them to you. Just uh, you know, give me a couple bucks for shipping. You can have them. That said, uh, these new seals, they just slide right on there, and uh, you press them down. So I'm going to get a, a bolt and a washer, stick it back in here, use it as leverage, and put a socket on here and just slowly press down with a, with a, a screwdriver or a breaker bar to, to get those seated. I'm not going to beat on them with a hammer. BTR says do not hit them with a hammer, so I'm not going to. So that's that. We have new valve seats, we have new dual valve springs, and titanium retainers installed in both heads. We are ready now to move on with uh, push rods and then go right along into uh, our new Trunion uh, or Trunion rocker arms. So here I have Michigan Motorsports. Uh, this is a uh, LS rocker arm kit. It's got the, the Trunion upgrade. So these have been pressed in already. They're ready to go. Get rid of the uh, uh, get rid of the needle bearing stuff. These are pretty nice. Comes with new hardware. And their instructions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, follow these instructions, uh, which are pretty specific. And I'm going to get my old uh, my rocker arms off of that that rail there. Get these put in on the head. And after I get them on there, uh, put a I'm going to try a 7.4 push rod first. I have a BTR, uh, BTR chromoly push rod set. These are 7.4s. I'm going to try these first. Uh, check for our, our valve lash and all that and, and make sure that, or, or test it and see if it's going to work. If they are too short, then I have another set of chromoly push rods right there. Uh, it came from a buddy, again, Dominique. Quick, 
got to be. <laughs> You're so <laughs> idiot. Right, he donated those to the cause. I do have the multi-layer steel head gaskets on here. So that's going to create a little bit of thickness to make the push rods need to be longer. But then also these heads have been cleaned up and uh, lightly machined, I'll say. Which may make the push rods shorter so i don't know and we'll try seven fours and we'll then we'll check and see if they're good they're good if they're not then we're gonna move on to the 7.5s All right, so just like I figured, the 7.4s, I got a turn, one full revolution and three quarters of a turn. I'm supposed to be able to get these tight between three quarters of a turn and one and a quarter turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch out for the 7.5, see how this does for us. All right, and here we are with the other head completely installed. Valve train is now in, ready to rock. So everything is, just for reference here, everything is torqued down to 20 foot, or excuse me, 25 foot pounds torque. Uh, the specs from uh, Michigan uh, Motorsports said to torque to 22 foot pounds, but I found online that it said 25 foot pounds for LS Motors. So that's what I went with was 25. I figured three pounds wasn't going to be that big of a difference. Anyway, uh, I have some, uh, I've got some ultra black uh, gasket maker on every thread, or excuse me, on the threads of every bolt uh, that holds in these, these trunnion uh, rocker arms here. And uh, if you saw me putting it on in the video, it's the, uh, the Permatex Ultra Slick Engine Assembly Lube. I've got that on everything that pretty much touches something, so... So that's all that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set these valve covers on there to protect it for now. So this is coming along really well. Uh, next up is gonna be the paint. Uh, after I get a couple little you know, sensors bolted on here and it's good to go. So I'm pretty excited with the progress that I've made. I've never rebuilt a motor before, tore anything apart like this. Of course, I didn't do the bottom end on the rotating assembly, but uh, you know, tearing it apart for inspection, putting it back together can be a uh, pretty, uh, overwhelming for somebody who's never done it before uh i use a lot of videos on youtube to uh get my information on torque specs and uh i use google a lot um you know i didn't want to share the entire process on every single bolt and torque specs and, and why i'm doing what i'm doing because this isn't the video for that this is just showing that i'm doing this stuff and showing that i'm that I'm, you know or showing what i'm doing um but if you do have a question about that and you want to know where my references are and, and where I get my information from, then I'd be more than happy to share that with you. Just ask and I will share the knowledge. So anyway, with that said, um, this is going to wrap up this episode. Uh, I appreciate you for watching. If you're new to the channel, be sure to click that like button and subscribe so you'll be notified of future content being released. You are watching DIY Dozier. Share the knowledge, share the passion, share the skill. And as always, do it yourself.